Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back to Gift Varsity TV. Uh, this is your host, Gift Bosekana. Uh, so, don't forget to subscribe, guys. Please subscribe, like this video, thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe again. We are on our road to 100,000. This is the only varsity channel that matters in this country, and we are about to bring more content that is varsity related and bring professional talk everything related to university so that you can be informed and make wise decision about your future and career you know we know that there is less information that talks about career path in many students for the fact that even though they have much potential they don't start the courses that would bring change into their lifestyle so me i'm here as the source of that information, try to do some research. I'm not an expert in these things, but I'm just gathering some information that will help a certain student decide on their path that they want to take, right? So now, today we'll be focusing on civil engineering, right? Becoming a civil engineer, uh, yes, right? So as I said in the previous video of mechanical engineering is that the engineering I will be focusing on is the Bachelor of Science in Engineering known as BSc Eng and the Bachelor of Engineering. There is other engineering national diploma, uh, BNG Tech, which are offered by majority of the University of Technology. But today I'll be focusing on Bachelor of Engineering at Witt, uh, University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, University of Pretoria in Pretoria, University of Cape Town in Cape Town, and Stellenbosch University in the Western Cape. And I would like to also include University of KwaZulu-Natal and University of Johannesburg. Right. So at the end of this video, I'm just going to also uh, explain some career opportunities that comes with becoming a civil engineer. Right. So let's start with uh, civil engineering at Vets University. So Vets University is located in Johannesburg, right? Uh, having a variety of engineering courses which you can enroll in but in today's video we'll be mainly focusing on civil engineering as a course right so as i said that civil engineers they are there to make sure that they design they plan and they construct and they maintain the physical structures that you see around uh, the country you know so basically we are just talking how to become a civil engineer and make an impact in the entire world, right? So the requirements at Vets University, they say you need a level five in English, whether it can be first additional language or it can be home language, right? And the physical sciences level five and mathematics level five. Guys, as I always say that having level five doesn't mean you are in, right? Many students are getting good marks nowadays. The competition, the most students are getting good marks. That means that the competition now, it's getting tougher and tougher, right? So it's very important to set your about your, your thing up there. What do you know? I must get level six or level seven for me at least to make in this program. At least get the level six or a level seven so that you can stand a chance of making in this program because they also say they want an APS score of 42 uh, points, right, plus. So, at Vets University, that is, it takes four years, right? There's a curriculum uh, where you do the common first years among, uh, I would like to say, all engineering students. They do engineering maths, engineering physics, applied physics, you know, but it's very important that you familiarize yourself with the curriculum that you will be uh, getting yourself into at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, right? So let's go to University of Cape Town, right? So University of Cape Town, which is one of the top university in Africa. Guys, I said it's one of the top university. It's the top university in Africa. But let me highlight this thing, right? In all the universities that I'm going to mention here, this engineering qualification is equivalent because it's regulated by one body, which is EXA, which is Engineering Council of South Africa, is the one that tells each university, this is what we expect from all the engineering graduates 
before they go and work in the engineering field, right? So it doesn't matter if your BSc and your PhD, as long as you studied in this university, it's gonna be the same thing, right? It can be different when it comes to University of Technology. We'll discuss that some other day. So our main focus today is on Bachelor of Science in Engineering and Bachelor of Engineering, right? So let's go to University of Cape Town. You need a level six in uh, mathematics. I think it's 75% and above. And you need a level six in physical sciences, right? So to make it in a cut, right? But always aim high. So if it's level six, so you must push for level seven. Then we go uh, to University of Pretoria, where you need a level six in maths and a level six in physical sciences and a level five in English, or which is first additional language, or which is uh, this thing, uh, home language, right? Then also the U U U University of Pretoria, there's a program called Engage, where there is an extra year, you know, there is an extra year. So it, instead of four years, it becomes five years. So in such a way that probably the curriculum is structured in such a way that if you are not entirely ready to face, because engineering is a, it's a demanding and a challenging qualification. And in this channel, we are all about making sure that you study something that is going to transform your life to become a better professional and a better person. And yes, that's our main aim of this channel, right? Then we go to University of KwaZulu Natal. Also, they offer Bachelor of Engineering. And KwaZulu Natal is located in KZN uh, University of KwaZulu Natal. They want the maths, it's level six, physics level six, right? Physical sciences level six, right? So I would like to believe in also in Stellenbosch, level six, level seven, they also, uh, so for you to, to make sure that you are in, in this program, <coughs> please, you must make sure that you aim for high marks. And I, I know some of the great terms have written already, so you are, you are on the, you are on, you are waiting for your marks, but I like to believe that. You, you did well in your uh, studies and you worked uh, extremely hard to make sure that you get all the marks that you needed for you to be able to be enrolled in civil engineering, right? All right, let's go to University of Johannesburg, right? University of Johannesburg, I think there is a civil engineering program, which is BNS Tech located at uh, DFC, but I'm not currently sure, but you should check that. But our main focus is the one that is offered at the University of Johannesburg, but at Auckland uh, Park Kingsway campus, which is APK, right? So there you need, they say you need a level five in maths, level five in physical sciences, level five in English, which can be either first additional language or uh, uh, home language, right? So Bachelor of Engineering is offered at APK and then BNSH Tech is offered at DFC. You must try and investigate between the differences between BNSH Tech and Bachelor of Engineering. It's up to you to do that research using the Engineering Council of South Africa website where you will try to understand which is better option. I'm not going to decide on that. It's you who's going to decide based on your marks and based on what you want to achieve. You get my point. But before we close... Let's go to the career options that you can, might have after you graduate. Let's say you manage to survive this engineering qualification, which is civil engineering, right? So uh, you can be a bridge uh, engineer. So, right, you design the bridge, you are there to maintain, make sure that you, it's a bridge engineer, it's explain yourself. You can be an earthquake design engineer, you can be a consulting engineer, you can be a construction manager, you can be an environmental engineer, you can be a geotechnical engineer, you can be a hydrologist, you can be a structural engineer, you can be a water resource manager. There are many more options that you might have. You see, I've been counting here, meaning that with civil engineering, you have a lot of uh, career opportunities that will change your life i have came across civil engineers and there is not even a single one that is poor and that doing well 
you know, living in their houses and driving their nice cars. Meaning, this is a good option uh, to study civil engineer if you, are if you are doubting yourself, right? But it's up to you also to do more research. Go to LinkedIn. Go and search them. You know, you can connect with different engineers where they will talk to you about the, 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 the how to become an engineer and all of this stuff. But it takes four years after you graduate, after you, re I think you register with EXA and all of the stuff, and then you go to an internship, I don't know, but yes, at the end, you will become a professional engineer. To all the aspiring uh, future civil engineers, I say I wish you all the best. And indeed, I hope that you will still focus and work hard even at university or even if you are planning to transfer to engineering, you are sure that, you know, that is the best decision you are going to make, right? Guys, don't forget to leave a nice comment and subscribe. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for watching till this time. Bye-bye.